it was uh, introduced by rocky mountain company and it is familiarized by humphrey and engel again an important question for you it is familiarized by humphrey and engel again another important mcq question for you okay ss crown was familiarized by humphrey and engel now the composition of stainless steel crown again an important topic for you so ss crown is composed of mainly composed of iron that is 67 percentage of the ss crown is iron only okay then you have chromium that is something similar to your 188 stainless steel which i have already studied right 188 steel so in that you have 17 to 19 percentage of chromium and 10 to 13 percentage of nickel and the other minor element constitute around 4 percentage only okay so the main component in the stainless steel crown is iron which forms 67 percentage then you have chromium that is 17 to 19 percentage then nickel is around 10 to 8 13 percentage and minor elements is four remember that uh, nickel chromium ratio chromium is around 18 in that 18 8 steel chromium is around 18 and nickel is around 8 so you remember the value like that chromium value is somewhere around 18 that is 17 to 19 percent and nickel is 10 to 13 percentage okay so this is the composition of a stainless steel crown now the basic tooth preparation what you do for a stainless steel crown is that what you do is that first you do an occlusal preparation and that occlusal preparation is just to give an occlusal clearance of around 1 to 2 mm then after your occlusal tooth preparation what you do is a proximal tooth slicing you do a proximal slicing which converges towards your occlusal and lingual aspect to give a 2 to 5 degree taper okay so the proximal slicing is uh, done to accomplish a 2 to 5 degree taper then you do a buccal and lingual surface if required is reduced around 0.5 mm normally you you know that the main factor in the retention of a stainless steel crown in a primary tooth is its cervical constriction and the prominent buccal ridge okay so generally you reduce the buccal and lingual surface only very little and only if uh, retain uh, only if that is that required then only you would go for a buccal and lingual surface reduction so if needed it is reduced only up to 0.5 mm then after that you round off all your line and point angles so occlusal reduction is around 1 to 2 mm proximal slicing to attain a 2 to 5 degree taper buccal and lingual surface if required it is reduced to around 0.5 mm okay that is a tooth preparation for your stainless steel crowns now this is an important session for many times this question has been asked in various entrance exam what is the buccal gingival contour of your primary molar okay so this is the picture so the buccal this is your second primary molar and this is your first mandibular primary molar and this is the proximal surface so what they are mentioning is the buccal gingival contour so what is this shape called for your second molar the buccal surface is a smile outline right so you refer that gingival contour as smile at the same time the buccal gingival contour of your first primary mandibular first primary molar looks like a stretched out s this is referred to as a stretched out s okay now the proximal gingival contour of all primary molars is again frown shape this is a frown shape see you can see a frown shape right so that is the buccal gingival contour uh, that is a proximal gingival contour of a primary molar and the lingual contour of all the molars is again smile okay so this is the buccal gingival contour this is an important question for you very easy to get also most commonly i think they ask where they have asked about the buccal gingival contour of your first primary molar which is stretched out s okay so you remember lingual contour of all your molars is smile proximal contour of all the molars is frown ling buccal contour of your mandibular first molar is again a smile mandibular uh, no, mandibular second molar is a smile and mandibular first molar is a stretched out s just like this okay this is a stretched out s very important topic for you smile outline stretched out s frown outline okay this is the buccal gingival contour in the molar and its relation to the stainless steel crown now 
moving on to the tooth preparation. So as I've already mentioned, the proximal surface are reduced using a 69 L bar and the gingival margin of the preparation should be a smooth feathered edge with no ledge or shoulder present. That is how you have to do the proximal surface. When you do the proximal stripping or the proximal cutting part, you should not leave any ledge or it should be a smooth feathered edge with no ledge or shoulder present. Your aim is just to break the contact area and your crown should extend 0.5 to 1 millimeter subgingivally. Okay. Now, this is the armamentarium that we use in a primary tooth. So you know that your primary tooth is one day, you have preformed crowns. So what you do, you don't have to take uh, do the tooth preparation, take an impression and send it to the lab. You have ready-made crowns, which you can adapt it to the particular need of the need of the tooth. So this is the picture of a contouring player. The number of this is very important. Number 114 Johnson's contouring player is used for contouring the tooth. So you can see that it has a convex end and a concave end, right? So when you place such an end onto the crown surface, what happens is that you can, when you bend it itself, you can easily adapt the crown cervically. So once you adapt the cervical portion of the crown, you can get the retention it can easily adapt to the shape of the tooth. So that is a function of a contouring player. The shape, the number of this contouring player is important. Number 114 Johnson's contouring player. You know you get a lot of image based question. So this is the picture of a contouring player. It has a convex end and a concave end. Now, other than the contouring player, another player that we use for, due for this uh, stainless steel crown is your crimping player. You can see it has an extended end here and two, uh, and a corresponding slot in the other end. This is the picture of a crimping player. So when you adapt a crimping player along the cervical line of the tooth, you can aid in the retention of the crown. So once you adapt your crimp, you imagine it has an area like this and a slot like this. So when you apply, when you walk that uh, player along the cervical surface of your crown, what happens? You can get, you can add the retention of it. Okay. So the, again, the number of a crimping player is important. It is number 417. So what was a Johnson's contouring player? It is number 114 Johnson's contouring player and number 417 crimping player. So these are the two players that is used in the armamentarium of a stainless steel crown. Now you have another method called the Hall technique, which was introduced by Orna Hall. Now the conventional or the traditional SS crown method that we mentioned was about a crown with a tooth preparation. That is, we talked about the occlusal preparation, the proximal slicing, and the buccal and lingual preparation if required. So in some cases, Norna Hall has introduced a method for managing a carious primary molar using a stainless steel crown cemented directly without any carious removal or tooth preparation. So that is you select a proper crown for the tooth and without any preparation, you directly adapt it onto the tooth surface. You don't even do a caries removal also. So this is particularly done in a non-cavitated lesion where the child is unable to accept a fissure seal and caries removal or a conventional restriction. <laughs> Okay, non-cavitated lesion where the child is unable to accept a fissure seal and caries removal or a conventional restriction. So that is a halt technique. So what will be the drawback of a halt technique? See, when, if you are not doing an occlusive preparation, what will be the problem? There will be height point. So that will be, that is a, that is the drawback of a halt technique. So how can you overcome? So the advocates of halt technique has said that uh, with the bite and occlusion of the child, definitely, and also there will be minor supra eruption and uh, intrusion of the opposing and all those teeth. And when all these mechanisms happen, the child will easily adapt to the occlusion. So that is why even if you don't do an occlusal reduction, uh, according to the advocates of Hall technique, the occlusion will be equally, e the, the occlusion will be easily tolerated by the child. So remember, Hall technique is a technique of uh, placement of stainless steel crown without any carious removal or any tooth preparation. Okay. Now, 
moving on to the modifications of stainless steel crown so you have sometimes you may get an oversized crown that is the crown is too large when compared to that of your original primary tooth we are talking about preform crowns so what can you do you can actually make a, slow, a small wedge open a small slit open your buccal surface of the crown then what you do you can do a spot welding you overlap the edges and you spot weld so that the size of the crown will be reduced okay so similarly if you have a small sized crown like this you only one small size crown is available and your primary tooth is bigger than the crown that is available so what you do again you create a wedge shaped opening then you place an additional band material over that opening again you spot weld it there and you can easily adapt it onto the tooth surface so this is how you adapt an oversized crown and an undersized crown you slit it open if it is oversized, you, you create a slit open, you overlap the edges and spot weld. If it is undersized, what you do, you place an additional band material and do a spot welding. So that is how, so these are the two modifications of a stainless steel crown. <laughs> Now, what are the complications of a stainless steel crown? So what are the problems when you give a stainless steel crown? So as we have already mentioned, you are giving some proximal slices of about two to five degree taper. Sometimes it can damage your adjacent teeth and may lead to interproximal ledge formation. If you're not holding your burr in a proper straight direction, what happens? You'll get a ledge formation. Now, some cases, sometimes uh, when you place a crown, you'll see a tilt in this crown or you can see a poor margin which will lead to gingival irritation and plaque deposition and gingivitis associated with that region. Or, and the fourth complication of stainless steel crown is the inhalation or ingestion of the crown. Sometimes the crown, the child may swallow the crown if the child, if the crown is not retentive. Okay, so this is the complications of stainless steel.